There he is. Just where you said he would be, right on that point. Get yep. him out of there. It's a light rod. Most people, when we think about Goliath grouper, they're thinking about these giant ones they see pictures of, you know, these three, 400 pounders. It's just huge things and, you know, totally different animal. What we were doing around the mangroves is fishing these, these juveniles. You know, I don't know how old they are, but they're obviously the younger ones. And that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, gut bit. Yeah. That's a good one. Got a bite too. There it is, double Once header. They start, man. Double header. Once they start. <laughs> Yeah! Come on, come on! Oh! He ate it! He ate it! He ate it. He ate it. Nice, baby! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about! I thought you said you had to... I got him, relax. Oh! Dude, nice. he just ripped my boat off! Oh! Awesome, look at that big boy! The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. What's up? Yo. Got some pinfish. Yep, how many we got? Uh, got enough probably for the day. Yeah. Um, Those are good ones. Yeah, there's some nice big ones in there. Well, I think we can uh, have those if we want to try to catch uh, Snook or uh, the glass grouper have been around, you know, starting to show up again. Great. Hit some islands and uh, bounce around. That's one option. We got to run back that way, and there's a, a little storm line we want to yeah. check out on the radar. I saw that, but maybe, I don't know. If that doesn't happen, maybe we can uh, come up with another plan. Yeah. And then if it's too bad there, we can, you know, get on up at the edges and, and uh, look for bumpers and permit too. Okay. Sounds good. So we left the dock at Hawks Cay that morning. It was a beautiful day. You know, we knew there were some storms on the horizon. We had the 26 that day, so it was really nice. We knew we were gonna have a comfortable ride. It was just a matter of if we were gonna um, have to avoid these storms or not. And uh, we took that 26, just, just shot through it, through the bridge and uh, went back into the Everglades there. And, and you know, this was the first time we'd really fished around the islands in that 26. We'd always use the skiff or bay boat um, to troll motor around those islands. And that was one of my concerns, was will that 26 fish those shallow spots as effectively? And it did great. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're kind of getting used to this 26. We're, we're experimenting with it. And, you know, obviously it's gonna do what it will do offshore. I mean, that's a, a given, you know, maybe, maybe you can't go out in quite as big a seas as you could in a 36, but I mean, it's kind of a hybrid between an inshore boat and an offshore boat. So. You don't want to get in over your head with some big waves offshore, and you don't want to get into water or areas where it's too shallow to navigate, but pretty much everything in between is wide open for that boat. So this is that spot years ago when we used to catch a lot of glass under here. Yeah, I remember. They've just kind of disappeared for a long time, but they're starting to show back up in different spots now. I figured we'd give this a, a whirl. I think these juveniles, you know, a whole new generation's kind of growing up and starting to fill in on these little islands. And you know, you, on the wrecks, you, you never see the little groupers. They, they definitely grow up in these estuaries, but then oh, when yeah, that eat. cold front comes through, I think a lot of these more tropical fish had a hard time with it. And glass, I think, are, I don't think they do very good in the cold. We'd heard reports, we'd seen pictures on Instagram of people catching more and more of these juvenile-sized Goliath groupers. Um, just really in the last two years, it seems like it, you know there's more and more of them around. Um, years ago, we used to really have a great um, Goliath grouper fishery for these small juvenile fish around the mangroves. Um, you, you perfected it down in Key West. I was catching them up here. It was just you know it was a great option. And then I guess a cold front hit, and it was just they were weren't there anymore. They just were not under those mangroves, um, and it was you know we really missed it. That was a great option to always have in your back pocket. And um, when they disappeared, it was, it was pretty disappointing, really, because I had gotten kind of used to, well, you know, no matter what happens, we could always go do that. Yeah, well, I mean, think about it. You know, almost every island here has, you know, snappers around. I mean, you can go catch, catch snappers for dinner. But those are like four pound fish, and, and you're catching those, and that's fun. But in the same exact spot, now there's a 20 to 50 pound Goliath grouper that you can hook and just makes a day out of it. I mean, it's a total different element to be in that sheltered, calm, and catch this giant fish. Just got bit. Did you? Yeah, that's a Goliath. Hello, good work, big Goliath. man. You stuck with it. It's a big one. It must be. You're you're huffing and Gee puffing. Whiz. That's so cool, man. Got him out now. He's pretty nice, dude. How cool is that? We thought about it. We talked about it. That's beautiful. That fish is uh, wow. Is, um, 
Good size, nice and perfect size for that this. That is such a bite, just poof. That is so cool. Now that's a confidence builder, you know? For sure. Wow. Wow, that was awesome. Just, I mean, I had slack in the line, you can still feel just the doof. We went down that first shoreline and we were flipping under there with, with a lack of confidence, right. you know? And we were flipping under there, you were on the back. I, I finally, I, this, this one point just looked so good. I could see it just wedged in there and I could tell there was some sort of wall and maybe an, an undertow and it just looked like a spot. If I was a Goliath, I'd be laying in there. And I just kept pitching in there and it wasn't the first cast, it wasn't the second cast. Finally, I guess I got it in there and it just got close enough to him or something. And sure enough, bam, and it was this distinctive thump. Yeah. I mean, the second I felt that thump, I knew it was a Goliath. Oh, look at all that he coughed up. Shrimp after shrimp after shrimp after shrimp. Look at that. Little tiny shrimp. Yeah. He's been feasting on them. Is that what those are? Wow, yeah. look at that. Like feasting they came, like on they them. they came out of your, your live well after. Yep. Let's just let him go, see if we can find another one. Sweet. And he just... <laughs> <laughs> that was great, man. Good job <laughs> sticking with it. Yeah. It just looked like such a good spot. Oh, got bit. Here we go. Got a bite, too. There it is, double Once header. Start, man. Double header. <laughs> the Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. B and W Trailer Hitches, towing adventure. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. And by Ameritrail Trailers, Daiwa, Marathon, Power Pole, and Reflex Boat Decking. Most people, when we think about Goliath Grouper, they're thinking about these giant ones they see pictures of, you know, these three, four hundred pounders. It's just huge things. And, you know, yeah. we've caught some of those over the years, and those are fun, but you gotta, you know, use a giant reel with, you know, huge line. It's really just to, you know, you know, test the strength just to get them off the bottom or whatever. Totally different animal. What we were doing around the mangroves is fishing these these juveniles, you know. I don't know how old they are, but they're obviously the younger ones. And, uh, you know, anywhere from 15 pounds up to, you know, maybe 40 pounds are real common. And, uh, and that's a lot of fun. Yeah, that definitely is one of my very favorite things to do. And um, I think it's probably because I grew up bass fishing and to be able to go back there and use tackle that's actually lighter than bass tackle. And you're fishing in kind of a similar type situation to where the fish is kind of back in or around some cover. I mean, it is a lot like bass fishing. And in fact, you could use the exact same tackle you use for bass fishing. Or like I said, what we were using is even lighter, like a bonefish rod, really seriously, like six to 12 pound test or, t or eight to 17 pound test. You can use really light tackle back there. And um, it's just a cool place. It, it offers a lot of good opportunities for us. First of all, it's generally against the bushes. So it gives you a good wind block and you can find these places where you can find some protection. You don't need visibility necessarily, so it's, it's kind of a day saver Yeah, a lot of times. Just where you said he would be, right on that point. Get yep. him out of there. It's a light rod. Nice job, dude. Well, I had to get it way back in there. He's wrapped around something. There he is. Nice, that's <laughs> awesome, man. Talk about calling your shot. And it's like, the right kind. Sweet! I'll tell you what though, man, had to get back in there really far. <laughs> but you're like, uh, I mean, totally called it. You're like, that's a, that's a point. Well, that's my recipe. I don't, I mean, I only know how to find them like, oh, there's a big one right there. Hey, All get right. your bait, get your bait, get your bait. There's one that followed him out, a really big one. Get a bait. I got my eye on him. He's going back underneath right there. If he threw back under, back there, that one was way bigger than this one. Yeah. And, and he went under right there. So let that sweep in Way there. bigger, huh? Wow, Way look at bigger. that. That is so cool. It was twice the size, two to three times the size of this one. They're beautiful, man. Man, you, you horse that fish out and you know, another beautiful Goliath. And I remember this was a, a little smaller fish and you looked down there while that, you were catching that fish. You're like, there's a big one, there's a big one. You know, it was so, so obviously the action of you catching that one lured another one out. That right. was where we were like, wow, there's more than one fish here. We always talk about it. Like action brings more action. And a lot of that is because they're coughing stuff up. A lot of it is because you're chumming and the snappers are coming out. There's a different vibration in the water. And just the excitement level. You right. think, you know, the, the, 
they're sitting there relaxed, nothing's going on, they're probably half asleep, and then all of a sudden one of their buddies is freaking out, going crazy. Yeah. They think he's, you know, yeah, he, he's he found, eating something. Yeah, yeah, he found something good to eat. Now I better go check it out. So interesting to me. We had this fishery going so good, and then it just disappeared for about, I don't know, five, six years. Hadn't, hadn't seen them, hadn't heard of anybody catching them. They just disappeared back here around the mangroves. They did disappear for a little while, but they're definitely coming back. That is just a mean looking fish. Beautiful in his own way. It's a good bite on these light rods, isn't it? Absolutely. That's good to see them coming back. <laughs> see you, buddy. He's got a big brother and a grandpa in there. Once I saw that second one, I was really sure. I was like, okay, when we've done that before, you know, sometimes in a spot where I'm thinking, there's probably three or four of them down there. There can be 20 or 30. Usually where you find one, there's more. Yeah, there he is. Better get some drag on that thing. He's taking you in there. That's the big one. Wow. I'm gonna get ready with the, for the double this time. Well, I tell you what, you gotta get it back in there. Oh, you got him coming now. Good job, dude. There oh, that's a nice one. Oh, look at what he coughed up. What is that? Crab. Big lobster. Lobster, Real yes. Nice small lobster. This wow. looks a little more like he coughed the one up that, that lobster. Came out. Hey, a little bit bigger. Nice. Here I'll grab it. They don't have to get a lot bigger to be, fight a lot harder. Oftentimes when you throw in, the biggest one is the first one you hook, and that thing breaks you off or whatever. Yeah, you know, you're always kind of kicking yourself. So one of the things that we've done in the past is like use the heavy tackle early. And so I was using a, a much bigger rod. And I didn't have the accuracy with that rod that I, was, that I really wanted. And I was thinking, you know what, if I went to a lighter rod, I could be more accurate and I think I could get it under there further. So I went away from the bigger rod, went to a lighter rod, and I, I sure was able to get it in there much better. The, the butt on the rod was shorter, so I could cast in there more like what, what I'm used to when we're sight casting for redfish or snook. And once I switched to that rod, that's when I started catching them. And if you hook one, you're gonna at least have the confidence that, okay, they're in there. At first, you know, we're just exploring. I didn't have the confidence that they were there. We needed to see one. All right, buddy, go back in there and have fun. Find another lobster. Can take yeah. that glove with him. He's going to. <laughs> cool. All right, I'm going in again. <laughs> I'm awesome. going in. I know where to go now, but it's still, even if you know where to go, it's hard to get it back in there. It really is. A lot of people think when we talk about glass grouper, they immediately think about these giant, you know, 300 pound monsters. That, you know, we've had some great days catching um, big ones like yeah, that. Yeah, you remember when we went out with Steve Roger and he took us to the wrecks and it was like a, a workout. Like, okay, here's another one. How many can you do? You know, and, and we caught some really big ones that day. And that's, you know, that's fun to target them like that. And then of course, when you're when you're wreck fishing or, or fishing in some different areas or snapper fishing or grouper fishing or whatever, you have these, kind of bycatch of, of one of these great big ones. And and that is fun, but it's totally different. It's totally different. It's a you're, totally you're different strapped game. in, big, big heavy rods, you know, where, where what we were doing was really, like I say, more like bass fishing. It was, yeah. it was casting. And what I enjoy the most about that fishing is one, we were, we were targeting them. We said, we've heard about it, we know they're coming back, let's go do it like we used to years ago. And we did not know what we were gonna get into, but, 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 but we wanted to catch these glass, we wanted to find them, see if they were there. We saw a spot that they looked like they were there, but we didn't know if they were there, to flip up in there and just, just that first thump, boom, feel that bite, and then trying to force them out of the mangroves. That's fun. Oh, gut bit, here we go. Yeah! That's a good one. Stop them, stop them. You, you cast right in the same spot? Yeah, pretty much the same spot. That's awesome. Dang, get him out of there. I'll tell you, he's 50 feet back in there. I do like the lighter drag, letting them go, Is that and then right? trying to bring them right back out of the same spot, but sometimes it works. Nice. It's a glide. That looks bigger than the other one. There he wow. is. It's nice. Nope, don't go back under there again. Nice 
shot. Oh, that's a good He's one there. like a pumpkin. Got a bite too. There once, it is, double header. start, man. Double header. Once <laughs> start. Oh, this is a big one. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, come on, baby. That is awesome. Now they're getting a little bit bigger each time. A little bit bigger. Oh, that's so fun. God, I love that fish. <laughs> I love that fish. It's so it's just such a cool fish. I think I got a whopper here. One of the special things about these glass groupers is they're protected. You know, that's a great eating fish that used to um, serve up on the menus, you know, years ago down here in the Keys everywhere, but they, they protected them. It's a no harvest probably for 15, 20 years or something like that. So the populations um, really come back. Uh, years ago, they were overfished commercially, um, but now the population is just fantastic. And, uh, but it's still a total release, you know, so we're catching them for fun. Like, you know, we catch and release most of our inshore species anyway. You know, it's fun to catch. We let them go, we look at them. Whereas on the contrast, um, you know, some of our edible groupers, like the black groupers and the red groupers that we're eating or whether we're spear fishing for them um, or rod and reel catching them, um, you know, they're very similar looking, you know, fish. They're, they're uh, you know, different markings and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, one is total catch and release and one is our top food choice. Oh, he's got a mouthful of teeth. That's interesting how you caught the small one on the first bite. Well, I tell you, you know, the faster we can get it back in there, probably the faster we're going to catch them because they start right. just like anything else. You, you, action brings action. I'm going to let right. this one go. Okay. Sweet. Here's mine while you're there. Okay. I'll bet you there's a 100-pounder under there somewhere. With all these small ones, there might be a super whopper. Could be. Take them out of the water. Oh, that's awesome. That is cool. All right, let's see if we can get back in there and do it again. <laughs> it's all about that cast. That is great, get that man. cast in there. Talk about fishing. So one of the greatest features of our Lawrence units is their ability to have a lot of different charts depending on where you're at. In this hybrid boat, we really want a mixture of both. We want to be able to navigate the inshore waters accurately, um, get through the channels, but we also want to see the, the contours of the reef offshore. This chip here, the CMAP Contour Plus, has been the best one that i found so far that really does a little bit of everything. One foot increments as we're navigating the flats and channels and really see where we're running, so that's great on the inshore side. And then it's also wonderful out on the reef with that one foot increments. You can see the drop-offs, the ledges, the reefs, um, and really find the good fishing areas. So it's a great combination of both inshore and offshore for this hybrid boat. And the best part about it is now if you buy a new Lowrance unit, it comes standard with that unit. If you have an older one and you want to replace it, just buy the chip separately and you get those great features. So if you want to get the CMAP Contour Plus chip or any of the gear that Tom or I are using, go to TackleDirect.com and follow the link below. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Tackle Direct, the world's premier fishing outfitter. Buff, built for ultimate sun protection. Waypoint, streaming the best hunting and fishing series. Download the app today. And by Bruno and Rod Holders. Nikon. Wiley X, Lithium Pros, and Golden Boat Lifts. Thanks so much for watching the show. We would love to get to know you better, and there's a couple of good ways to do that. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. We post there a couple of times a day, or you can find the Tom Rowland Podcast on iTunes or anywhere you find podcasts. The Goliath grouper is a, is a fish that you look at it and you're like, man, this fish looks like it has a powerful tail. It's got a big round tail. And when, when they bite and burn you back under the bushes, I mean, it's, you're not really holding them back. You're kind of holding on more so than you're holding back. When they get really big, and when I say really big, I mean, I think, I mean, really big, like the size of a car. Man, I mean, it is a different fight because one swipe of the tail that is a tremendous amount of power. 
So it's not like the little ones fight completely different than a big one, but you're literally talking about something that's, that's 10 pounds versus something that is 300 pounds. So of course it's going to be a different fight. And the, the commonality between the little ones and the big ones is that they're living around some kind of structure and they, when they feel the hook, they want to be back in that structure, whatever. Yeah, and the fun part about or, this size that we were catching is, is we can do it on the light tackle. It's just so much more um, of a feel thing. It's, it's, you know, really more enjoyable for me. Got him? Got him. Nice. That's awesome, man. What cool fish. <laughs> right, right before the rain, Rich. Yeah, man. Right before the rain. Way to do it. Look at that guy. He has been sitting in the shadows. He's a little darker than the rest of them. Here, I'll, gra I'll grab him for you. Oh, I think I can get him. He's hooked right on the outside edge. You want the D hooker? No, I don't even think I'm going to need it. You got oh, one got too? I got one too. Let's give me a snapper here. You know, the Goliath grouper is a is a controversial fish because a lot of people say that they don't have enough protection and some people say that they're overprotected and overpopulated and there's too many of them. And one fisherman is like, they take every one of my fish that I catch, they bite them and eat them. And then another fisherman's like, are you crazy? That's the best fish in the ocean. So you have, uh, you know, all, I have a whole bunch of people that come down here only to catch these. So the Goliath grouper stirs a lot of controversy because there's a lot of different opinions about them depending on what, what your agenda is, you know. And uh, for us, our agenda is we like to bend the rod and <laughs> have some fun and, and they're a great target. Ouch. There he goes. Nice. Yeah, he's out. See ya, buddy. Well, that was fun. Think we can make it home before it starts raining? Yeah, but I'm gonna catch a giant one right here. Are you? Yeah. You got one on? Not yet, but I'm gonna put the right All bait right, on. Will you try to do that? I'll start cleaning up.